If I may, I just would like to move to the next panelist and Julia, it's about GL. GL is doing a great job in onshore Azerbaijan, as you know, yeah. And you've drilled quite successfully in exploration wells, which I've heard, Prefacila, for a very long time. Never been that successful in onshore. Great data came in so that we can take over and learn from. So I would like to give the floor to you and just really share with us what's going on there and how you guys dealing with the production optimization in most cases, how you 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 kind of what 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 the methodology, what what the technology you apply to optimize the production and what's the future plans there? Well, thank you for that uh, introduction, and it's, it's, it's a pleasure to talk to this uh, esteemed room. Um, what I'd like to do today, and if, forgive me, I'd like to actually talk a couple kind of personal perspectives on really what we're talking about today, which is what does it take to grow a vibrant business in Azerbaijan? And I think you're hearing a, a couple key words, the importance of the base and the importance of efficiency. So as I go through and talk about what we've been doing recently, um, we need to sense check ourselves and really challenge ourselves on what we want to achieve and the details of how to achieve it. And I'm not going to talk too much about our results, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about what we've learned. And, and I want to do that because I want to talk about how we approach the area of the, of the business that we're working on right now. Uh, but one of the things that we've been hearing a lot in the last two days is that our, our world, but certainly our industry, is in transition. Uh, lots of transitions. We can talk about the energy transition of, of movement from a, a carbon-based world to a, to a sustainable world, uh, but also what that means in terms of our business in particular. Um, and there's Everyone has their own view of the various lenses, but there is a lot of different transitions going on, and I would offer a perspective of this business has always been in transition. That's always been here, and the thing that always holds the foundation is efficiency, and you heard Bob Beck talk about the importance of efficiency. Everything we, have, we do, we have to be efficient. And part of what we do in forums like this is to learn from each other's experiences and lessons learned so we can see what's working. And just as importantly, what's not working. And I'll give you a little flavor of both. Uh, but the, the, the importance uh, of efficiency is it, 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 it fits all assets, from exploration through new developments through our niche, which is the, I'll say, the oldest of the fields, uh, the, the, the brown fields. Um, it holds across our asset base, it holds across the, in, the entire industry. But now, uh, I, I said uh, I wanted to offer a personal perspective. I want to go back to when I was a young uh, student in, in college, 1978, 45 years ago. Um, and I was told by uh, a professor um, about the first oil well drilled in the world. And now, stay with me. It was drilled in Titusville, Pennsylvania, and drilled in 1859. That's what I was told. And it wasn't for 20, 30 years later that I realized that was wrong. The first well wasn't drilled in Titusville, Pennsylvania, by Edwin Drake, by the way. Um, it was drilled here. It was drilled in 1846, 12 years before anything was going on in the United States. And it was drilled not too far from where we're sitting here today. And it's 180 years of uh, industry that was started here and has proudly maintained its success through that period to this very day. And part of our challenge is looking forward to that, maintaining that bright future. But I'd also offer a perspective that fits kind of the, the, the area that, that um, our company is working. Well, that well was drilled in Bibi Abad. And sitting here 180 years later, Bibi Abad is still producing. The, the pump jacks are still going up and down. Why is that important? Old fields don't go away. 
new people come along and push for efficiency, push for technology, and push for innovative solutions to breathe new life into these old fields. And I think that's an opportunity for, for all of us. And I know there's some very exciting opportunities. We're not the type of company that's working in exploration or some of the major developments that's well beyond our, our scale. But the ability to take these old fields and breathe new life, create new value from, from old barrels, um, I think is a large opportunity worldwide, but especially in Azerbaijan. There's dozens and dozens of these fields um, that have, it's not that they've been neglected for a for hundred years, this has been done. It just needs to be done and refreshed every so often. And that's part of our challenge is, what does that look like? The second bit of, of kind of personal anecdote I want to put on this is the, anybody who's flown recently, look out the window. You're in, sitting in a jet, you look out the window, you see a wing, what do you see at the end of the wing? You see this little piece that sticks up, it's called a winglet. Why is it that out there? It wasn't out there 30 years ago, it's out there now. That's done to decrease drag, because the edges of, uh, yeah, the, the, the detail aren't important, but the, the edges of the wing have what's called induced drag. There's a little bit of a, a vortex out there, you have to drag that along. Somebody came up with the idea to put a little bit of wing out there, vertically, that breaks up that vortex. How big is the improvement because of that little bit of wing you see? About four or five percent. That four or five percent, sounds small, transformed the airplane industry. You don't see airlines without that little bit of winglet out there now. That's our business here. And that's my challenge to ourselves and this industry is to look for those equivalent ideas. It's not every time it's a doubling or, or, or this massive improvement. It's looking for those four or five percent increases. Now, we all know some of the big uh, opportunities, you know, 3D, obviously in my lifetime, horizontal drilling, fracking, these are monstrously uh, important technologies. But our experience really tailors that towards kind of low-cost, fit-for-task technology. Back to what Bob Buck was saying about fit-for-task standards, fit-for-task technology. So we very much look at things like well, caseful logging, looking for opportunities to identify remaining bypassed oil that hasn't been produced yet. Okay? We're looking at opportunities like using oil-based diesel uh, for drilling. Very, it, it, of course, this is not new technology. It, it's done around the world. But the application here, it's new. First time in the fields that we operate. But also doing that in workovers. Why? Because if you can put diesel into a, into a field, into a well, instead of water, one, you damage the formation less, and two, when you put it back on production, it starts producing oil much quicker. These are not revelations that change the industry, but they get you a few percent. It's like that little winglet out there. So let me just briefly summarize the, the, um, our, our basic approach. We, we look at four core principles. We want to understand every field we work on, so improved understanding. Understanding our data, understanding our subsurface, but how the subsurface integrates to the wells and the facilities. That's job one, because that's going to be the cornerstone of our development plan and all optimization. We bring in the fit for task, the right technology. So we, we have built a digital database for all our fields, so all of our information, seismic, logs, production, uh, well information, well histories, is all there integrated. This, other companies have done this historically. It's done at very large scales, but at the scale that, that it is needed in our fields, this is the first time. Very important because that's the engine that drives um, uh, all, all of our opportunity. Um, cost management. There are fields in Azerbaijan that produce hundreds, if not over a thousand barrels a per well. Our average, five to 10 barrels a day well. You have to understand cost management very carefully. Where's the water coming from? Do you have to produce it? Can you get rid of it? How do you optimize how long a well runs? Runtime, meantime between failures. 
um, all these things become important in terms of optimizing costs out of, out of each well. And then last, for us, focus. It's really difficult for an organization to work large fields and small fields. It's really difficult for an organization to work exploration and brownfield optimization. The way we fix it, we do one thing. This is our core business, and this is what we focus on, and we develop it into a, a capability, a process, a System. mindset that really is, is something that we can do at scale, which leads to the kind of where we're headed. Well, where we're headed is we have a lot of business to do on the five fields we're currently operating. I've already given some of the ideas, some of the, the opportunities we see. But what we want to do is expand it from there. So we're very optimistic and, and uh, excited about the future here. We play our niche. Lots of other people in this room play in lots of other niches. But it's a very exciting future. Thank you.